guys, today I am here with my March wrap up and my April TBR. I know I said I wasn't going to do monthly TBRs anymore, and this isn't t really a monthly TBR, but I'm just going to tell you about some of the books that I'm in the middle of that I will definitely be finishing in April. But for now, let's get to the March wrap up. I read six books in March, which was pretty good reading month for me. The first book that I completed was The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith, aka J.K. Rowling. Some of you probably know that a while ago it was revealed that Robert Galbraith, who was writing these mystery novels, was actually a pen name of J.K. Rowling. So I was intrigued by this and I wanted to pick it up. The Cuckoo's Calling is about this detective named Corman Strike, and at the beginning of the story he is not in a great place. He's just broken up with his girlfriend. He doesn't have any clients. He's living in his office. But then a man named John Bristow walks in and he wants to open the investigation of his sister who was a supermodel who supposedly committed suicide by jumping off a balcony to her death. But John Bristow doesn't believe that it was a suicide and no one wants to take this case so he's kind of reached out to this unconventional detective. It took me a, a little bit to get into this book but once I did I really enjoyed it. I gave it four out of five stars. I think I enjoyed this book more for the characters especially uh, the main character of Cormoran Strike. He was a really interesting and well-developed character and you could just relate to him and and root for him I think. And I also liked the character Robin who is his temporary uh, secretary who comes in at the beginning. And I thought their relationship and the interactions between them was really interesting. I was a lot more interested in the characters than necessarily the mystery or trying to figure out what actually happened. I will say that the big reveal at the end, I didn't quite see it coming. I've heard that the second book in this series is a little better than the first, so I do plan to continue. I listened to this on audiobook as well. The next book that I read was Don't Let Me Go by Katherine Ryan Hyde. I read this in paperback, but I lent my copy to someone so I don't have it right now. I read this for a book club, even though I didn't actually end up going to the book club meeting. But nonetheless, I'm really glad that I read this book because I absolutely loved it. I gave it five out of five stars. This book is about a 10 year old named Grace and her mother is a drug addict and she's not really in a good place to take care of her. So essentially, Everyone in her kind of rundown apartment building starts taking care of her. The novel goes back and forth between her perspective and the perspective of one of her neighbors, Billy, who is agoraphobic and he hasn't been out of his apartment in years, even though he used to be a rather successful dancer in New York. This was a really excellent book. I would highly recommend it. I absolutely loved all of the characters and I loved the interactions and the relationships between the characters, especially between Grace and Billy. I read this book really quickly. It was one of those that I really couldn't put down. I would highly recommend this book. I can't really say enough about it. Go read it. The next book I listened to on audio and that was The Un-Americans by Molly Antipole. This was a book of short stories. Overall, I enjoyed these stories. I gave this collection four out of five stars. I will say that they were extremely well-written short stories. I do know that this book was nominated for the National Book Award, or maybe it won, actually I'm not sure. But it was very well written. Some of the stories I liked more than others. Some of the characters I could relate to a little more. The kind of common thread throughout all of these stories 
was that all of these characters had some kind of connection to America, but then to also to other countries. Like they were originally from another country and they were living in America, or their parents were from another country. I think they were all Jewish, I'm pretty sure. There was a story about McCarthy-era communists in Los Angeles. There was a story about a playwright. There was a story about an older man who gets married for the second time. It kind of was a broad range of stories. There were some really interesting and engaging relationships that she explored. I would recommend reading this book if you enjoy kind of the more thought-provoking literary fiction. I will say that I wasn't always in the mood for this book, so it kind of took me a while to listen to all the stories. I did listen to this on audio, but because it was a collection of short stories, it was easy for me to kind of just listen to one and then pick up something else and then listen to another one, and I kind of did it that way. The next book I read on ebook, and that was Beauty and the Beast by Jenny James. This is book number one in the fairy tale collection. I downloaded this book because it was free, <laughs> and I was just flipping through my ebooks one day when I had my Kindle with me and uh, nothing else to read, and I just decided to read this on a whim. I really enjoy the fairy tale retellings like this. This was a retelling of Beauty and the Beast where the Beast character was a werewolf. I thought that was very interesting. Um, I thought that was kind of a unique idea, a unique take on Beauty and the Beast. Overall, I think I enjoyed this story. It was pretty short. It definitely had some flaws. There was some questionable... There were some questionable plot points. And the characters were a little iffy, and I wasn't uh, very convinced about their connection. But I will say that it was kind of fun to read, and I do like Beauty and the Beast retellings, so I enjoyed it for that reason. I don't think I will pick up any more of the fairy tale retellings by this author. Although, I am sure there are a lot of people who would enjoy them. I would give this book 3 out of 4 stars. The next book that I read was a book of poems called I Wrote This For You and Only You by Please Find This. Now, obviously, Please Find This is not a real name of a poet. Um, one of the cool things about this book is that I don't think there is a real poet's name anywhere in it. Uh, I absolutely loved this collection of poems. I read it in one sitting and I gave it five out of five stars. I did a review on this book specifically so I will link to that down below. But you should definitely check it out if you like poetry at all or even if you don't. And the last book that I read in the month of March was The Lucy Variations by Sarah Zar. I checked this out for my library. I really enjoyed this book. It's about a girl named Lucy who is 16 and she has been sort of a child prodigy with piano. Uh, she's been playing ever since she was very, very small and her parents kind of had her, you know, playing piano before she could even decide that's what she wanted for herself. And she got really, really good and was playing on a professional level, traveling all over the world. She wasn't in conventional schools. She had like a tutor. So then uh, one day she decides that she doesn't want to play piano anymore. There's a little more to it than that. But uh, when the book starts out she has quit piano and she's going to a normal school but her little brother is still playing piano and when his teacher dies which isn't a spoiler because that happens on literally the first page uh, he gets a new teacher 
who's a younger man, and she develops a sort of connection with this guy and finds that she might want to play piano for herself. I read this book really quickly. I really enjoy Sarah Zar's writing style. I could really relate to this book, being a musician myself. I used to be a musician. I was in a few independent bands here in Atlanta, and I did kind of an acoustic singer-songwriter thing. About a year ago, I decided that I wasn't going to play shows anymore in that context. I still play every now and then for myself, and I might, you know, sing at my church or something like that, but it's, it's really for fun now, whereas, you know, four or five years ago I was trying to make it as an indie musician. So in that aspect, I could really kind of relate to parts of the story and her relationship with music in general. I also enjoyed how there wasn't really a romance in this story. Like there kind of was, but that wasn't really like the main thing. The main thing I think was her relationship with music. I don't see a lot of that in young adult literature. Maybe it's just that all of the YA lit that I read has a very strong focus on romance, which I generally enjoy, but it is nice to read a story focused on a female character that isn't really about that. I did recognize there were some flaws uh, in this story, but overall I really, really enjoyed reading it. So I gave it four out of five stars. I started a few books in March that I didn't finish. Most of them are like non-fiction craft books about writing that I just pick up and read here and there. So I don't know if I'm going to finish those in April or not, but there are two books that I'm in the middle of that I will definitely be finishing soon. The first one is My Name is Memory by Anne Brashears. I have to take this back to the library in like 10 days, I think. I've renewed my library books uh, as many times as I can, so I have to turn them back in. So I definitely need to finish this one soon. But I am about 125 pages in, and it's really fascinating to me, so I am sure that I will be finishing this one soon. This is about um, a guy named Daniel who remembers all of his past lives. In this book people are reincarnated and most people don't remember their past lives but this guy does remember all of them and he has this connection with this girl named Lucy who he's known in previous lives but she doesn't remember her previous lives so it kind of goes back and forth between the two perspectives and I'm finding it really fascinating. So I'm excited to finish this one. The next book that I'm in the middle of right now is The Real Boy by Anne Ursu. This is, I think, a middle grade book. I've been listening to it on audio, but I borrowed the hard copy from my mother, who was the one who recommended this book for me. I think she read it in a book club where they were, um, this was their pick for children's literature and she really loved it so I am reading it. It's really interesting so far. It's about a boy named Oscar who lives in this kind of magical uh, land where he works as a hand for a magician. He's kind of like his assistant but the magician has gone off and all of these mysterious things are happening and all of these children are getting sick. He meets an apprentice girl named Callie and the two of them are kind of trying to figure out what's going on and figure out how they can help these people. There's more to it than that. There's a lot of magical elements in this book and I'm interested to finish this one. I'm about halfway through and hopefully I will be reading a lot more than just those two books, but I don't know what those books are going to be right now. What about you guys? What did you read in March? What do you plan to read in April? Have you read any of these books? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. 
Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like my videos. And I will see you guys next time. Bye! No.